A major deal in the cannabis space as Tilray and Afria have agreed to combine their operations. The merger creates the world's biggest cannabis company, which will still be called Tilray. Shares of TLRY are lighting up this morning, already up more than 22%. For more on this, we're joined by Guy Harrison, General Manager of the Risk and Compliance Business at Dow Jones. Guy, great to have you with us on the show today. I do want to start more broadly on the cannabis space overall. Do you think we will see more mergers and acquisitions and deals like this one in the cannabis space? I think so, absolutely. You're starting to see a lot of consolidation within the industry. I think the other thing that we really note is just the growth of the industry overall. I mean, look at this this morning, a billion dollar merger. The combined entity is going to have uh, revenues approaching a billion dollars. Um, and certainly it's an industry that can no longer be ignored, certainly by financial services sector regulators throughout the U.S. So for Tilray and Afria specifically, what do you think was appealing to either side? Or do you think this was just getting two big players in the space together to create more revenue, to create that scale? Is that kind of the, the motivation or the instigation for a deal like this? Certainly, I think you, you see scale being a major motivation uh, for, for the merger itself. Um, the combined, also, that scale means that it's a business that uh, a lot of their stakeholders can, can no longer ignore. It might well give them more sway with, with those stakeholders uh, and, and certainly combined reach of, of both their, their combined customer bases. So Guy, of course, these two companies are Canada-based. What do US regulators and lawmakers need to do domestically to draw more business um, in the cannabis industry? Well, I think first and foremost, a big issue for the industry is the lack of clarity around regulation uh, and how they how they operate at dow jones risk and compliance we have a database of marijuana related businesses uh, we've seen that database grow from just four thousand when we started back in may 2016 to over twenty four thousand now earlier on last month so 500 percent growth in just four years um, at the same time that the, the business is booming and there's huge reward there for financial services participants in particular, we see banks less and less willing to bank marijuana related businesses. And really it's that kind of regulatory uncertainty that's driving that unwillingness to, to bank these marijuana related businesses. So for example, uh, just uh, on September 30th this year, according to FinCEN, there were 677 banks and credit unions in the US who were willing to bank marijuana related businesses. The preceding quarter, that was just shy of 700. The quarter before that was 711. So you see a steady drop off in banks' willingness to do business with marijuana related businesses, despite the growth in the industry. At Dow Jones Risk and Compliance, we surveyed a lot of these compliance officers earlier on in this year, and 63% of them said that they were unwilling to facilitate transactions for marijuana related businesses. And really there were three main issues. Firstly, that, that doing that sort of business would draw increased scrutiny from regulators. Secondly, that they were putting their institutions at higher risk of reputational damage. And thirdly, they were worried about enforcement actions and fines. So huge growth in the industry on one hand, but an increasing unwillingness in financial services to do business and facilitate these sorts of businesses. Yeah, Guy, thank you for laying out some of those risks that banks are considering, but can you help to contextualize why they view those things as risks, given that the space is growing so much, and the fact that regulation looks like it's uh, moving in a positive way way with more legalization across different states, especially in the last couple of years, why are banks viewing this space as risky, even though we might see more legalization going forward? Well, really, it's the mismatch between the state and the federal level. So you've got 35 states that are legalized for medicinal, uh, 15 for recreational, yet it's still illegal at the federal level. Um, we might start to see some movement on that now with the Biden administration. Certainly Trump repealed Obama legislation uh, that, that uh, 
uh, said it wasn't going to prosecute banks that do business with state compliant marijuana related businesses. Uh, that might start to change now with the with the Biden administration and certainly has indicated previously support for decriminalization of adult recreational use as well as medicinal use. And also he supported the Safe Bank Banking Act in the past as well, that again, uh, federal regulators won't prosecute state compliant uh, business, uh, banks that do business with state compliant businesses. And Guy, outside of regulatory considerations, it feels like a, a burgeoning space is a good idea for banks from a business perspective, just how much business and, and revenue potentially are banks missing out on by not doing business with cannabis companies? Well, I mean, the, the figures speak for themselves. And you know, if you look in the regulatory filings associated with the, the merger this morning, not only do the numbers stand out in terms of the amount of business being done right now, but also the growth in business. And you see clear, much clearer regulation uh, and much more established markets in Canada, uh, and in areas of, of Europe, um, and US banks and US businesses are going to start to, to miss out if some of these uh, inconsistencies aren't ironed out and clear regulatory guidance is given to banks about how they facilitate this type of business. All right, Guy, thank you so much for your time and your expertise today. That's Guy Harrison, General Manager of the Risk and Compliance Business at Dow Jones. Thanks again.